We want to, uh, Francis uh, Balfour, would you come up tonight, Francis? This is, this is one of our nations that, uh, that is represented in our churches as Ghana and, and Africa and uh, preached in Ghana uh, several years ago. And uh, Francis is in our church and been here for quite a while. And he just got back from Ghana and he went over there and ministered to his people. And so we want to hear from him just a few minutes tonight. Would you welcome Francis Walk? He's got a book out too. You'll see it on the screen. God I want to thank God for this opportunity to speak to you or to talk to you about the mission in Ghana. And I want to give thanks to uh, Bishop for giving me the opportunity to do this. Amen. Hallelujah. I just got back from Ghana. Uh, February 2009, I was in Ghana from February to March, uh, evangelizing uh, neighborhoods, uh, villages, cities, having crusades all over the place. And in October, actually, October that same year to January this year, I went back again. This time, the Lord made, made me focus on the churches. And I did not understand why until I got there and I heard stories. There is so much church going on in Ghana. So why the need for me to go there? Because in every church, there should be a part of the church that reaches out to their Jerusalem. And there should be another part that reaches out to the uttermost part of the world. And that is what I do. And many people do over here. But when there is a church in a country or a city or a town, and they don't know the difference between church, the kingdom life, and the Christianity as a whole is a problem. If they don't discover the difference, then they will leave, they will go to church, all right. But when they get out of church, it's a different lifestyle. And I believe there is no one here like that. Amen? Because the discovery that the Christian calling is just a single calling will motivate diligence. Hallelujah. It brings people under constraint of obedience to the one who loved them so much and died for them. You know, Apostle Paul discovered this. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, if you read from 13 to 15, it says the love of Christ controls me or constrains me. And I can do nothing except to obey him. Hallelujah. And because he chose to die for me, to give me life, so I can live the life of God. Amen. Amen. So it is very important to discover that we are called to a single life. Whether I'm in church or out there in the marketplace, or in my home, or in my marriage, or in my relationship with people, in my contract with other people. It's a single life, and God demands obedience to his word. The Bible says Jesus, when he put on the body, he learned obedience through the things that he suffered. And he was perfected. And he never sinned even a single time. Again, the Bible says that he was called the Son of God with power through the spirit of holiness. We are the children of God. Amen. Amen. So there should be some holiness going on in our lives. Amen. It's not a matter of getting to church and being satisfied with church. We have somewhere going. We're going to the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. And in the kingdom of heaven dwells the consuming fire of God. The Bible says he's a consuming fire. And it's a consuming fire of holiness and righteousness. No corruptible thing can approach his presence. See, that's why the Bible says without holiness, no one can see God. But he desires to give us the kingdom. Amen? He desires to give you and me the kingdom, 
the people of Africa, he wants to give them the kingdom. But unfortunately, they have allowed difficulty in life. That is right there, over there. To make them live different when they get out of church. So I really understood why the Lord sent me there. And the second time I went and spoke to them about the fear of God. Because 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1 says that we should purify our body and our spirit from anything that is corruptible. And mature in the work of holiness through the fear of the Lord. Because without a person or a, a believer or a Christian walking in the fear of the Lord, there is no way you can get yourself off evil and evil ways of the world. There are so much evil in this world. To corrupt anyone who lay down his hands and not stand against it in our walk in the Lord. There is so much evil. So we Christians and believers, as it is in Ghana, we have to learn to draw the battle lines. The battle lines between righteousness and unrighteousness. The battle lines between acceptable things in life and unacceptable things in life. Because we are born again by the spirit of the living God. Our spirit has been made alive to identify that those things that are corruptible. If we are in the world, we are blinded by the devil, so we don't see what is good or evil. But once we have been saved, washed by the blood of the king of kings and the lord of lords, he demands that we know what is wrong and what is right. That we know what is righteousness and what is unrighteous. What is holy and what is corruptible. Amen? Amen. And when we do that, there is an increase in our divine strength. You know, Second Peter chapter 1, if you read verse 4, it says that God has given us his very great and precious promises. Amen? So that if we live by them, we would escape corruption that is in the world. And what happens? We take on the divine nature of God. So it is very important to constrain ourselves in obedience to the one who has saved us. Because it was disobedience that got us into corruption from the Garden of Eden. Amen? So he has come to save us. So we will return to obedience. Sometimes I wonder why God put the tree of life in the same place where the tree of knowledge of evil and good. I said, Lord, were you joking? No, he was not joking. He was going to take them through that test of obedience so they will have access to the tree of life. See, Jesus came and God put him in the garden. And he was tested. And he won the victory. The Bible says he, has, he was given life so that he will be the source of life for each and every one of us. So if we are being conformed to the image of Jesus Christ as a church, as people, as Christians, as saved people, filled with the Holy Spirit, then obedience is one thing that we have to learn. Amen? In fact, it is important to learn obedience because our obedience will grow us in the work of righteousness. And as we mature in the work of righteousness, we become holy before the living God. You know, Jesus, when you look at Isaiah, Isaiah 11, the Bible says, his delight was in the fear of the Lord. No wonder he was powerfully holy. Holiness is power. Righteousness is power, spiritual power. You know, I went to Ghana, and everywhere I go, Pentecost Church, Assemblies of God Church, even Anglican Church, the power of God was working. The Spirit of God was working mightily. Deliverance, deliverance and healing. Why deliverance? Why was the Lord doing deliverance in those churches? 
Because I have come to realize that it is bondages that are in the lives of people that prevents them from living the kingdom life. They enjoy coming to church, but they have no idea that Jesus brought the kingdom life. Kingdom life will put you under constraint to obey the one that you have has saved you. So it is very important to discover that Christianity itself is kingdom life. And the kingdom life, Jesus said, is a narrow gate lifestyle. And it's constraining and difficult. And only a few will find it. But we have found it. Amen? We have found it. So we give glory to the Lord.